Hey everyone, so I'm back again with another video. This time around, I have some retro video game pickups. I have four disc based games and one cartridge game. Uh, I'm going to start out with a couple of just loose disc games and let's get right into it. So, first up, I went to this store called Game Mania here in the city of Toronto. Uh, I mentioned before, I haven't been there in about a month, maybe a little bit more. Uh, I took a look around, I went right for the disc only bin because I've been able to find some pretty decent PS1 and Sega Saturn games in there and a couple of Sega CD games too but I decided myself uh, not to really look for any more Sega CD games because I don't currently have a working console unless of course it's a really expensive game for really cheap uh, I'm not going to be buying any Sega CD games anytime soon um, I found these games here though they were kind of interesting so I went ahead and grabbed them the first game here I have to show is, I got it for $3, it's a Squaresoft game for the PS1, it's called Front Mission 3. Now I know for this, there was no Front Mission or Front Mission 2 in North America, and this one's the first one that we got, but there's a Front Mission game for the DS, I think it's a remake of the first one, but I'm not entirely sure. Uh, and there were... I think two or three more games released after this one, but for the PS2 and the PS3. Uh, I, but I'm not entirely sure what kind of game this is. It's got to do something with mechs, but that's about all I know. Uh, next up is a Final Fantasy game that I don't think I'll really enjoy. Uh, I don't really like tactical RPGs, uh, but this game here... I mean Final Fantasy and a tactical RPG, it's Final Fantasy Tactics. I got this for $5, and uh, the disc is just a little bit scratched, but still playable because, I mean, these PS1 discs, especially these uh, black discs, they seem to take a lot of damage and still work. I have many discs that are, like, they've got gouges taken out of them, and they still play just fine and some games I've even completed uh, with a completely scratched disc and they've still played all the way through um, anyways the next disc only game that I got uh, the last disc only game that I got is a Sega Saturn game and there were a couple of Sega Saturn games there but all the other ones were priced at $15 um, one other one was priced for $10 as well because uh, this one here was $10 but I didn't feel like getting any of the other ones, they just didn't seem that interesting, or they were games that I technically already had, so I didn't bother with it. I found this one game here that I believe is either a remake or a sequel to a kind of notorious NES game. It's Virtual Hydlide, or Hydlide, I'm not entirely sure how to pronounce that, but I'll just call it Virtual Hydlide, and I got this for ten dollars and I noticed that it was actually an Atlas game now I know the NES game wasn't an Atlas game so I'm just gonna assume it's just been published by by uh, Atlas uh, anyways Hydlide plays like a Legend of Zelda clone but the original Hydlide actually came out before the first Legend of Zelda so I mean, it's a pretty generic, uh, a, a pretty generic genre for a game, but yeah, it, it pretty much plays like The Legend of Zelda. But I, again, I'm not entirely sure about this version here because, for all I know, it could be entirely different, or it could just be um, a remake of the original. Uh, next up is a PS1 game that I got. It's actually uh, complete in box, and it is a PAL PS1 game. Uh, it did come out in North America and Japan as well, but I saw this at the store. They wanted only $5 for it, probably because the case is kind of cracked, and it's one of these thicker uh, PAL PS1 cases. It's, again, a game that came out in North America. It's in a fighting game franchise that's pretty well known. Uh, it's the Soul series, so Soul Calibur. Um, is like the main set of games in the series but this here was the very first game in the series called Soul Blade and I believe that's Valdo on the front I might be wrong um, 
I'm not too into uh, Soul Blade. I haven't really played it, even though I know these characters appear in later games as well. I just don't remember it that much because Soul Calibur is one of those games that I played mostly when I was younger. Um, I've played uh, more recent versions in the recent past, but uh, I don't really remember much of it. All I know is that uh, it happens, like the story of events happens a couple hundred years ago, um, and they take a place across uh, different different countries in Europe uh, and a couple other regions, I believe. Anyways, the last game that I got, uh, sorry for the long-winded crazy stories there, but uh, this one's going to be just about a minute more. Uh, I look, I took a look at the Genesis games. I don't usually look at Genesis games because it's not really a console that I collect for. Uh, I don't really have any fond memories of the Genesis, nor do I really like the Genesis, even though I do like later Sega consoles. I saw this one game. I had no idea what I was looking at. It was only ten dollars, and from what I could tell, it was a pretty decent looking platformer. I thought for ten dollars in the box, why not? It was missing the manual, but the cartridge was in pretty good condition, like almost a ten out of ten. I just I I had no idea about this game because I could not find anything on this online anywhere. I couldn't even find listings of it on eBay, even completed but unpurchased listings or even purchased listings. I couldn't find anything at all. I tried looking up a couple different websites that list um, approximate prices of games. I couldn't find anything. Then I finally decided to look up the Wikipedia page for this and I pretty much figured that it was released in Europe, it was released in Japan, but the North American version was unreleased. Now, I don't know what this would mean. Uh, basically, I'll show you guys the game, and please, if anybody knows anything about this, please let me know. Uh, it's a game called Jelly Boy. Uh, it's made by Ocean. There's some involvement with EA Games as well. Um, again, it's just a platformer. You play as this jelly boy whose main attack is turning his stomach into a fist that pops out and punches people. You can also get pick up, uh, pickups. You can also get uh, sort of uh, power-ups by picking up these random items. Uh, there's like a hammer and a balloon and stuff like that. It basically... Uh, plays a little bit like a cross between a, a standard platformer and a boy and his blob where you feed the blob different gel different colored jelly beans to transform into different things but in this one he just uh, finds random items uh, uses them to turn into something that's along the lines of that items form and then he gets a momentary power-up um, but yeah it's supposed to be a very hard game but again I don't know how this thing even exists if it's a reproduction cart which it might possibly possibly be there was also a couple of review copies or something that were uh, given out to different people back in the mid 90s uh, right before this game was released but I know that it's not a Mega Drive version because like I mean the label itself says Genesis on it. Um, I mean, if it was a Mega Drive version uh, from either Japan or Europe, it would have said Mega Drive on it. Uh, anyways, that's all I got. Again, if you know anything about this game, please let me know. Sorry for the long rambling at the end there. Um, as always, leave comments in the comment section below. Anything you'd like to say, comments, questions, suggestions, ideas, anything at all. Um, just leave it in the comment section below and I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. Uh, also, check out my 300 subscribers contest. Uh, it'll be linked in the description below. Uh, enter if you'd like. Don't if you don't want to. It's all fine by me. Uh, check out my Facebook, Twitter, website. They're all linked in the description below as well. And that's about it. See ya.